When those of other religions and non-Hindus examine Hindu philosophy, they can often be struck not just by the number of different schools of thought, but also by the number of contradictions. Islam has a very simple and straightforward theology. God is the creator without form, and we are his creation. We follow his commands, and if successful, we enjoy heaven. Christianity has a degree of complexity with the incarnation of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But none of them come close to the way Hinduism explains the divine. On one hand, Hindus say God is the most powerful being, beyond any understanding. At the same time, they believe he takes the form of a child and cries when his mother scolds him. They say that God is omnipresent, yet reduce him to a stone image ready for worship. On one hand, Hindus say God is the great creator of all things, then at the same time state that he is creation itself. They say he has a form, but is also formless. He is infinite without boundaries, yet he is a person with specific attributes. While there are different explanations to justify these positions, to a large extent, in Hinduism, contradiction is baked into its philosophy. But why do these contradictions exist? The reason is simple. Divine truth only becomes apparent when we are able to embrace contradiction. Paradox is the portal through which transcendence is reached. The moment we collapse reality into absolute, clearly defined principles, we actually miss the nature of God altogether. When we embrace contradiction, a stunning thing happens. We are made to go beyond the mind. Our thinking is comfortable in this material reality and the laws by which it operates. The moment it is presented with contradiction, the mind either has to reject it or it has to step aside. If it rejects it, the principle is seen as false and nonsensical. If, however, it is accepted on faith, the mind can no longer play any role. Reason and logic has to be suspended, and what happens instead is that we end up developing real wisdom. This wisdom is not born of logical understanding, but from a deep place within. When Krishna is about to show his divine cosmic form to Arjuna, he specifically tells him that you cannot see this form with your material eyes and so blesses him with divine vision. Contradiction in philosophy helps us to develop this divine vision, to experience God firsthand. Paradox and so-called logical fallacies are actually tools in Hindu philosophy designed to challenge the mind and encourage us to delve into ourselves. Having said this, if we create a philosophical system that is entirely contradictory, it can lose value altogether. In order to walk a spiritual path, the mind needs a certain amount of coherence to hang on to. There should be some clarity about who God is. This is what keeps us grounded and stops us falling into vain fantasy. Striking the right balance between coherence and contradiction is the challenge and goal of Hindu philosophy. The amount of contradiction and mystery that can be woven into a religious system often depends on the adhikar or the level of spiritual advancement of the followers of that religion. The Kanishta adhikari is one who has a low level of tolerance for contradiction. They have to have a simplistic set of principles with clear ideas of black and white. Rules and regulations have to be rigid and concise. The Madhima Adhikari is one who needs a degree of logic to make sense of things, but is open to mystery. They understand knowledge is limited. As a result, they accept explanations can only go so far and may not always be perfectly defined. The Uttama Adhikari needs no philosophy at all for their inner development. They have realised the truth and have experienced a mystery that surpasses all philosophy. They may, however, enjoy, speak and teach in philosophical terms for the benefit of those who are still on their way. The danger of the Kanishta Adhikari is that their over-reliance on philosophy leads them to over-rationalise God. Instead of using explanations to bring them to the mystery of truth, they try to condense the mystery of truth to fit their understanding. 
Because they have no real inner experience to guide them, they latch on to external ideas and obsess over them. This is what leads to extreme dogma or religious fundamentalism. It causes individuals to miss the experience of God altogether. The Kanishta Adhikari can often fall into the trap of enjoying working things out intellectually. Spiritual principles become more about feeding our ego satisfaction. We do not enter into God's glory, instead we try to conquer him by believing we understand him. The Madhima Adhikari, however, sees that philosophy at its best is not simply meant to explain the supreme truth, but to awaken different bhavas. Bhavas can be seen as feelings or spiritual realizations. The beliefs in our mind dictate how we look at the supreme truth. Believing that our divine self is the totality of all creation and God invokes a certain kind of bhava. Believing our soul is a part and servant of God invokes a completely different bhava. Importantly, as the Madhima Adhikari grows, they know when to rigidly hold on to certain rules and principles and when it is time to let go of them. They build an inner intuition which allows them to discriminate when philosophy is inspiring them or when it is potentially holding them back from the experience of the divine. The Uttama Adhikari is in a completely different league. They embody the very truth that is expounded in Hindu philosophy. They are immersed in spiritual realization. They may conform to philosophical principles and rules, or they may not. Because they are completely situated in the divine, they are free from the material world and free from all dogma. The reason why Hindu philosophy may appear so diverse and contradictory is that each philosophy tackles reality in different ways and it is geared for people with different tastes and at different levels of spiritual growth. If we look at physics for example, here too we find a variety of ways in dealing with the world. Newtonian physics is clear and predictable when building and constructing things. Relativity explains the impact of moving bodies on space and time. Quantum mechanics deals with the dynamics of the subatomic world. The three systems of science are vastly different. Newtonian laws cannot be used to predict the movement of particles in the quantum world. The models of quantum mechanics cannot be directly applied to space and the equations of relativity. Each field of physics is in opposition to one another. Nonetheless, they are all true and internally consistent. Each one is geared for dealing with reality at different levels. The same is true of Hindu philosophy. It may appear contradictory, chaotic and diverse, but there is good reason for this. Unlike other religions which provide a one-dimensional theology, Hinduism has explored every avenue of life. It has understood the psychology of humanity, the level from which they exist, as well as the expansive nature of God and reality. The contradictions and paradoxes are not deficiencies, but a sign of sophistication and profundity. Through the grace of the masters and saints, it has delivered numerous philosophies which have enabled man to raise their consciousness and realize the supreme truth. Many thanks for listening.